Hello, my name's Johnny Duddle and I'm an author, which means I write books, and I'm also an illustrator, which means I draw pictures for books. Um, a few years ago, I wrote a book called Gigantosaurus, this one. Um, quite a few people bought it, and it's also been made into an animated TV series. So, with so many people stuck at home, trying to learn things, I thought it'd be a good idea to teach you how to draw some dinosaurs. I'm going to start off with a Diplodocus. In the book, he's called Tiny, this is him, and in the TV series, he's called Bill. So whether you've read the book before, or seen the TV series, or neither, um, you can draw along with me. So, Diplodocuses have very long necks, and I'm going to start with the head. I always start with the head, because it's normally the most fun to draw. So first off, the head is kind of square but with curvy edges so if I do a kind of curvy square and I'm going to leave it at the bottom like that leave it curling down so his neck can go there and then we can do a big eye so a big circle maybe some lines underneath and then another eye poking out around the side here and then when I draw pupils, the little black bits in the middle of your eye, I do a black circle, colour it in, but I leave a little white dot and it looks like light reflecting on the eye. So here's one. And then the other one kind of pokes around the edge like the eye does, but with a little white dot still. And you can leave them like that, or you maybe you want to draw the iris, like if, you're if your eyes are colour like a, you've got green eyes or brown eyes or blue eyes, you have another little circle around the outside of that, so you could draw that around there if you want, or just leave it as a black dot. And then, the way I've drawn Bill, or Tiny, um, he has these two little nostrils really high up on his head. So they're like little circles too. And I just colour in one bit of them, just a little bit like that. And then, we're going to draw a long neck. So if you go down like this, and then it curves. And then a tail joining up. Ooh, I'm pressing too hard on the paper. And then from the point, you kind of curl back round his tail, make sure it's nice and thick, coming back on the tummy, making it even thicker. And this is complicated, it's like a backwards, it's like a C actually. Um, you curl around this way, and then a little lip going around the end of the C, and sway right down to join up with the tummy. There. And you've got a nice big curvy dinosaur shape. Um, I sometimes draw a bill with teeth, and you can colour in this bit here black, like the inside of his mouth. He always looks a bit surprised as well. I've pressed a bit hard here, which maybe I shouldn't have done, because that's where his legs are going to go. Actually, move him up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to draw his legs. Now, when I drew this Diplodocus, he's not supposed to be a realistic Diplodocus. He's got a sort of slightly different shaped head and neck. And maybe I'll try and draw a real realistic one later. But his legs... are just kind of stumps. And then I'll draw a shadow here. Maybe quite rough where the ground is. Maybe a little rock with some grass, like that. And then his other leg, actually, let's rub that bit out. I've got quite a fancy rubber here, which is a bit like a pen. So I'll just rub this a bit out here, if it rubs out. And some wrinkles where his leg joined his body. And maybe a little wrinkly knee. And then he has toenails like this that just stick on his foot. A bit like an elephant's foot, really, but very, very tiny. And then another leg. This is his leg that's on the other side of his body. And because it's behind his thing, I sometimes draw a little shadow at the top here to look like the body's casting a shadow on it. Maybe some little lines like that. Now, I'm not entirely sure what to do with his arms, actually. I hadn't really thought about his arms. Maybe he could be... He could, have, he could have been for a walk in the jungle, so he can have one arm kind of like this. And 
joining up to his body and his hand resting on his on his tail so the fingers are just like a few bananas like that so he's a bit tired and then the other arm I'm going to follow this arm like this and I draw very lightly I'm going to draw like a it's a bit like another cube and then draw fingers with little finger neck little little wrinkly bits where his knuckles are if I'm going too fast you can pause it and try and copy the bits that's his thumb and then this is where his top of his knuckles are they can be a bit wobbly on the top like that join the arm up. Now he's not clenching his fist I thought he could be holding something so maybe he's just got a big stick in his hand. So some lines for the stick actually it's a bit close to that rock. The top of the stick and then maybe a little bit of a branch with some leaves. Maybe one leaf. And then when I've drawn the stick, I've got lots of little lines in it, and it makes it look like the bark. Maybe a little shadow like his, we had on his leg there, to sort of like his hands holding it. So what's he missing now? I think he needs some little ridges on his head. If you look at Tiny in the book, he's got these little bobbly sort of, I'm not sure what they're called on dinosaurs, these little ridges all along his back. So I'm going to draw, start up at his head and draw smaller ones. And draw them all the way along his back. And sometimes when I get here, if you go a bit kind of into it, it makes it look a bit less realistic, like his tail's turning a bit. Maybe a little, a little teeny bit of tail there, and it makes it look like his tail's twisting. Um, let's just rub out here where his arm's going into his body. Should have thought about that. And then also, Tony has this sort of light bit down his body here. So if I start at this top of his head, I'm pressing very lightly round his mouth, down his body, they kind of meet his leg there. And then you can start drawing just little tiny scales. Maybe try and press a bit lighter to draw the scales. You can the one thing I found when I did a dinosaur book, the first dinosaur I draw, I thought this is fantastic drawing dinosaurs, it's so much fun. And then by the end, I was really fed up of painting scales. I'll leave it like that and you can draw as many as you like and colour them in. I'm not going to colour this one in. It's my first go at this kind of thing, so I thought I'll just leave him and you can decide what colours you want him. In the book he's blue. It doesn't have to be blue. Your deposits will be any colour you like. Well that's it. He's kind of finished. So if I went too fast, you can pause or rewind um, and pause it while you draw at your own pace. But if it goes wrong, and I see it's a lot with children that get really cross, don't worry too much. You can just draw it again. If you look at these drawings that I did in my sketchbook, this is when I first did the characters. This one wasn't right, this one wasn't right. I did a few different shaped heads until I found the one I really liked, and that was the finished design. Um, and that's what he ended up on the book, just like that one in, this, in my sketchbook. So that's about it. If you, if you do a drawing and you like it, maybe try and post it on Facebook or Twitter, and I'll try and do another dinosaur tomorrow. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.